Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. Um, so I'm joined tonight by Natalie. Hello Jamie, how are you tonight? I'm good, I'm very well and I have a surprise guest. So we, we do have, have a surprise guest. We do. So joining us from uh, NZTS Workshop is Stefan. Hello. Hi everybody. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I'm not sure if you were there for a second. Yeah, we were just. <gasps> <laughs> so we'll be running a picnic, um, picnic run. So if you have any questions for Stefan, um, uh, just let to, just let us know. So, so Stefan, um, would you like to tell us um, about yourself and how you come to build build the route? Uh, righto. Um... I actually started making Train Simulator stuff for Microsoft Train Simulator way back in 2001 or two. Wow. Right at the beginning of it anyway. So I've been doing it a very, very long time now. And uh, we've been, I've been plotting away on other, on Steam Loco. But of course we needed somebody to run it. Yeah. So hence the route. Ah. Make sure I get all the lights on. No, I'm not gonna I've not I'm not gonna go very far, am I? So Jimmy, you're gonna be driving this wonderful route tonight, aren't you? I am, yes. Now did you say Stefan I've gotta turn off the vigilance somewhere? Where is that? Yeah, um control D I think. Control just D. Just the keyboard command. There we go, thank you. There we go. Right. Get the brakes. Be off. Asked if you're Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, definitely not. <laughs> Close. <laughs> I must admit, it does look a fantastic route. Look at that. Look at that. Oh well, we're going backwards. Oh, we should be. We should be uh, putting some. Uh... <laughs> it's not going very well. Have you had any practice, Jamie? Are you going backwards? Yeah, I went backwards for a second there. Yeah, I died. I, I, I went the wrong way. You've been caught out by the fact that very few of the yards are actually flat. Yes, that that, that is <laughs> that is basically what I'm doing there. <laughs> All right, have we got? The question is, have we got a green light? We should do. We'll find out in a minute. Just check is everybody is the sound all okay? That's just one thing for the chat. Yeah, I did see one person saying that Stefan might be a little bit quiet, but, um... I'll just talk louder. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> just shout down the mic. <laughs> and we're off. Here we go. Yeah, apologies um, that the title was incorrect at the start of the stream. It should be right now. We are uh, showcasing the Midland line, aren't we, Jamie? Yeah, we are, yeah. And I must admit, it does look fantastic. Look at this. Uh, apparently, they can't hear any loco sounds. Oh, okay. Hmm. Higher game volume. Higher game volume. Yes, right. please. Oh, hello. Sometimes setting up the volume and stuff is uh, really stressful. It's it's like it's the one bit of streaming that always gets me. Every time I think I've got it right, I haven't. Is that better? That should, that's better. Yeah, we go. There we go. Lovely. Make sure I adhere to the speed limits. So, Jamie, tell us a little bit about um, what we're driving, what route we're doing, what loco are we showcasing? So, Stefan, this is the... Um, I'll probably turn this up too loud now. I can't hear myself. Um... This is the the diesel locomotive that we've got. So, what, what uh, class is this? Um, just for us to so the chat knows. It's a DJ class locomotive. They yep. were built in 1968 by Mitsubishi. Oh wow, Mitsubishi! Oh wow. They are yes. After a a uh, very complicated process involving a loan from the World Bank and all sorts of things. So. Yeah, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As you, I'll, just, I'll just go to a well. Uh, the, I'll get a loan and go and buy some diesel locos. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's no yeah. problem. Yeah. So the the history of the so obviously we were on the Midland Line. What's the history of the the, the Midland Line itself? Uh, 
it's quite a long history. It started yeah. as a way to get to the centre of the Canterbury Plains, which is where Springfield is, mm -hmm. for the coal fields that were there. And then, of course, the west coast over the mountains is got a lot more coal. So yeah. onwards they went. Uh, with a private company originally who rapidly went broke because right. of the need for so many viaducts and tunnels and everything yeah. else along the way. Yeah. Uh, so the government took over in the end. And yeah. so they started building around the early 1880s to the oh, coast wow. and finally got through in 1923. So it took yeah. them quite a long time. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that, of course, was digging the tunnel through uh, at Oterra, being yeah. eight and a half k's long and on a one and 33 grade. That took them wow. uh, almost 14 years. So, Wow. Blimey. Oh, that's a great bridge. Yeah, we're just coming over the first viaduct now. That's Big Kauai, which is the youngest of the viaducts on yeah. the route. Oh, wow. Because the um, previous one was uh, washed away by floods uh, a couple of years before the route was set. So, ah, oh, wow. So that's the replacements that they built oh, we in see. a hurry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I notice it's the river's quite low, but I imagine it comes up quite because it looks as if it comes up quite high, considering the embankment. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of those things that is probably one of those one in hundred or five hundred year flood events, and they just got misfortune. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit, it's a very, very roomy cab. It's lovely. Not bad for a what is a narrow gauge loco to have so much space inside there. Yeah, because you were saying it's save uh, three foot, what was it, three foot something? Three foot six. Three foot six. Yeah, so it's technically a narrow gauge. Yeah, I do, Charlie, I need more power. Yeah, I've gone a bit slow there. <laughs> you need a lot more power, that's a decent grade there. Oh, one in 50? Oh, dear, <laughs> blimey, yeah, I do. I... <laughs> so, I yeah, guess... Um, you've been developing this route for such a long time, uh, you know an awful lot about it. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know as much as you know now before you started, like were you already full of this knowledge or have you just built it up? Oh, I, I acquired a fair bit more <laughs> doing yeah. the, the route when you have to research different bits. Especially because we, we wanted to set it in a specific year, we wanted to set it in 1968. Right. Because that was the transition year from steam to diesel. Yeah. And at, at Oterra, the electrics also changed to newer electrics that year as well. Mm -hmm. So it was for future expansion, it's the perfect year to set it. But we had to do an awful lot of research to pin down that exact time period. Mm. Yeah, it's quite a quintuitant history because that's around the same sort of time that steam ended here, really, you know, in the UK. You know. Yeah. So it's quite an interesting. Well, New Zealand was very aligned with the UK then, so probably yeah. just following along with the trend. Yes, yeah. So some people are saying that the train looks old. Is that intentional? Have you tried to make it look a bit... Uh... We have. We've yeah. included um, weathered versions like this one. Yeah. And nice, shiny, brand new, as delivered as well. Because mm -hmm. the, the as delivered isn't as familiar here in New Zealand because the paint job faded to that pale pink very rapidly yep. in the right, okay. harsh UV we have down here. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And as for the carriages being almost black, uh, the end of, uh, I didn't really believe in cleaning things, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jimmy, you're being asked about the headlights. Can they be put on or can they not? Yeah, they can, yeah. I was just... Uh, I turned them off for a bit. Oh, I thought... Okay. There we go, there you go. They are on. It is a very sunny day. Yeah. Um, we're being asked, will there be more locos for the route? Yep, we're currently working on a pair of steam engines, so mm -hmm. that'll be interesting. Uh, JA class and, uh, of course, the KB class, which were nice. famous on that bit of line. Yeah. That, that bit of track, the bit of track from Springfield to 
Arthur's Pass that we're currently driving, it was known as KB Country, so... Yeah. Yeah, because I, I must admit, because I don't know how many of them preser are preserved. There's not many, is there, now left? There's, there's one KB left. Yeah. Well, it was only a class of six, so... Oh, really? Is, oh, wow. It's good, so... So I'm not sure which, which uh, where we're coming into now. This is Kawaii Bush. Kawaii Bush, there we go. So how are you finding it to drive, Jamie? Is it it's, it's, challenging or it's, quite it's, straightforward? It's quite straightforward, I must admit. It's, once you get used to it, it's, it's, it's quite a nice location to drive, I must admit. It's very, very, very nice. Does it compare with anything else that you, you're used to? I'm not sure. I'm trying to think what it compares with. I think I think the thing is is that I, I've done a little bit of driving, but not too much. If you see what mm -hmm. I mean, with it. So I think once I get used to, I'm trying to trying to think what to compare it to. I mean, is there anything you can compare it to, Stefan? You know, with well, like after, not really, because after six years of developing the route, haven't really played anything, anything else. else. <laughs> 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 I, I mean, really had um... time. As it's taken you six years to develop, um, have you have you had like some significant challenges along the way? I imagine you probably have. Ah, uh, yeah, there's been quite a few of big hurdles. Um, the first one was the overhead at Arthur's Pass in Oterra. It being um, V-shaped overhead, not your standard two wire, but a three wire arrangement, which means that the entire overhead had to be actually modelled, not rendered by the game. So it's a scenery asset that took about six months or something to do. Oh my wow, blimey. On the plus side, at least all the poles and everything are in the exact right locations according to various plans and photos, so... <laughs> yeah. That's yeah cool. And one of the other big challenges is, of course, the signalling. Yeah. Two different yeah. signalling systems and they have to work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, which is easy in real life when one of them's controlled by a person, but uh, not so easy in simulator land when none of them are controlled by a person. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you say it took you a year to do the yeah, signaling? Yeah, so took a year, a bit over a year to do the signaling. It's just amazing. Wow. And then uh, just quickly for anybody that missed your introduction at the beginning, um, yeah. just like to introduce yourself again, just uh, tell them who you are, what your job is. Um, hi everybody again. I'm Stefan. Um, I'm uh, what you call it. We work. I work with uh, my mate Ryan mm -hmm. uh, for NZTS workshops, and this is our very big labour of love. There's just a few people that were wondering uh, who you were who missed the beginning of the stream. That was all. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the route is full of what by international standards would be deemed quite severe grades. Mm -hmm. Yes! One in, 50, one, in, yeah, in one in 45s and things like that. Yeah, I must admit it's something I have noticed because um, when driving this you've got to be so on it. Um, because yeah, it's a, it, constant ups and downs. Yeah. Because the minute you, you, you think, oh, okay, no, I'm fine, you know, I'm coming up the hill, and then all of a sudden, you then get, hang on a minute, it's now going down, and you're like, oh, blimey, right, okay, I better get on the brakes, you know. Yeah, <laughs> get on them quick, yeah. because it runs away on you pretty fast. It does. Mm. I imagine you're quite the expert at driving this route now as well. Funnily enough, not really. No? <laughs> you shouldn't be able to do it blindfolded. <laughs> Almost. I, I always know exactly whereabouts we are on the route, but um, I only really drove the full length a handful of times testing okay. the scenarios, because usually I was scripting the locos and the likes and just picking a bit of track where I knew what the performance was meant to be like for that section and doing that until it was doing what it was supposed to. Is it um, quite rewarding watching somebody else drive it then? Um, oh, it's certainly it. see somebody else getting some enjoyment out of it. Jamie certainly will be. 
It's, it's, it's just it's something so different. Like the scenery mm. and everything, like everything that we've had in, in TS. It's just something so nice. I just love all the bushes and the, the mountain scenery. I mean, just look at that. It's just amazing. Yeah, it's um, somewhere around 2,000 scenery assets. Wow. Um, wow. And the root uses a hundred percent custom assets. There's no nothing default or from any other add-on in there at all. We built the whole lot. Wow, that is amazing. And I love that you can hear all like um, at night, and all, you hear all the animals as well. I love. Can you really? It. You can. It is. It is. I just I really do you hear all the insects. Sorry don't you as well with this yeah so yep. did, did we you went make out and did yeah, yeah we did all the, the recordings ourselves i went and stood in the middle of a few paddocks and climbed a few hills <laughs> wow in order to get the proper sound recordings yeah that, it, that is amazing just the amount of immersion with this and how real it just feels mm. it's just it's, it's amazing another viaduct we're coming up to another massive one Oh yeah. Yep, this one sh will be Patterson's Creek. You're gonna get a good yeah. shot, Jamie. There you go, look at that. Beautiful. That is a lovely violet. Make sure I keep an eye on my signals, because I'm chasing yellows at the moment. <laughs> yes, that one is spared. <laughs> no, I, no, and we'll be back right to the start again. <laughs> of course, this is um, single line automatic signalling, so if it, even if it's red, you only have to stop for 10 seconds and you can drive past it. Really? Oh, right, yeah. yeah. I was going to no. ask about signalling, because obviously I'm currently acquainting myself with uh, German signalling and British signalling and American signalling, so I was curious what what New Zealand signaling is like? It's probably most similar to American, especially the colour light system, which is mostly speed indicators as opposed mm -hmm. to hard instructions. But yeah, the single line automatic section, which we're in at the moment, um, the intermediate signals, even if they're red, you only have to stop for 10 seconds and you can proceed past. So even if they remain red? As long as yep, you've they'll, they'll stay, they'll, they're, they're even scripted, so if they, they will stay red, but you can drive past after the 10 seconds. Oh, wow. That's amazing. The, the rule is you have to then, the real life rule is you then have to proceed at a pace where you can stop in half. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, would you recommend uh, that uh, our users perhaps uh, educate themselves on the signaling system before giving it a go? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, but yeah. We included we included a set of scenarios for the single line section. Yeah. And its signalling system, so that people can get the grips of what the various signals mean. That makes sense. Yeah. So that nobody course, uh, gets themselves in trouble. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and of course the manuals covers yes. it all, and it covers the other type of signalling system as well. Yeah. But the single line automatic was the most complicated of the two for people to understand so that's why we did tutorials for that one yeah the scenery really is fantastic it's amazing just in yeah, the tunnel you, the you just uh, showed a little bit before you went in that tunnel and it's it's magnificent it is got the ground light on It's just, it's like every bit you turn to, there's just a little bit more, see, you know, and you, it, you just give it a different view on each mountain, and you know, and, it, and also uh, I've been further along and it's amazing because you've got a little mountainous area and then it goes lower do, is it when it climbs, because um, it's quite a high route, isn't it? It's like 2,000 feet above sea level or something? Yeah, um, Arthur's Pass is somewhere around here, can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, it climbs quite a long way. We climb by about 300 or so meters. Wow. So, and yeah, we go mostly following river valleys on their way up. Yeah. Just 
just uh... brilliant. So, um, with regards to the speed and stuff, what what kind of speed limits are we looking at for the for this route? How fast uh, does it go, Jamie or Stefan? Um, it's forty-five miles an hour max for passenger trains and thirty for freight. But most of the route is in corners and through the um, Waimakariri Gorge where it's limited to 20 for all services, so it's not, it's not a high speed run. <laughs> so, um, similar to the UK, it's uh, measured in miles per hour, not kilometres. Yep. Uh, yep, the New Zealand Railways only transitioned to kilometres in the mid-70s, so at this oh, really? time period it's still all the miles per hour. Oh, no someone idea. in the chat has got a, an interesting we uh, question. Uh, Dan Deman has asked, "Why is it called Arthur's Pass?" Ooh, that is a question. Named after the um, English explorer who found it, even though it was well known by the native population of the Maoris at the time. Ah, I'm assuming his name was Arthur. Yes. <laughs> Ends it spelt also officially spelt with an apostrophe, which a lot of people like to drop out, but it's named yeah. after a person, so. Mark Peters says, love the wheel sound squeaking. It is, yeah. So, when you obviously, because did you go out to the, the locomotives to record the sounds as well with this? Yep, we got access to both the loco types to record the sounds so yeah they're recorded from the real things oh, wow do you uh, are they heri so they're preserved i'd imagine as well uh, uh at the time the djs were semi-preserved they were working for dunedin railways on yeah. daily services but not so much now that uh covid is a thing so it was a tourist operation ah <sighs> okay I, I, I didn't realise that there was a massive gradient change, so I don't... <laughs> Are you okay? Are you stuck <laughs> in a <the> tunnel? <laughs> Just went a bit slow. It's fine. We're getting there. Chugging along. Yep. At least if you, if you stay uh, going slow, you won't run any spads. No, that is very true. You, you're well yeah. ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll we'll, we'll be talking to the chat or something, or looking at the chat and go, you know, oops, actually, I should be uh, slowing down. I always break perfectly. Don't I do? Do you? Do you? I don't, I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> oh, I have a tendency to overshoot. Yeah, we call it a Natalie, Stefan. It's, yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> Look at that. I can see what you mean by the 2000 scenery objects. It's just look at that. It's, look at this. It's amazing. Yeah, there's a ridiculous number of foliage assets. Because, of course, you can't just uplift uh, scenery from some other country and plonk it down and say it's New Zealand because it won't look at all like it does. No. So, um, DW trains and say don't overheat the engine, Jamie. Is that something you can you can do is that is that possible yep that's scripted in it will it'll cook itself if you run it in the red amps for too long wow oh my goodness. i don't i didn't know you could do that it's a good job you someone told someone mentioned it because <laughs> i'd probably be driving it and then suddenly it's just like making fun you know blow it up yep. without realizing what you've done yeah should be fine with a light passenger train, but if you're dragging the brake for too long and you've got the power on, it'll um, you'll get a horrible ringing noise and it will stop. Yeah. Wow. I actually, funnily enough, I did get that when I was trying that, this out. Well, I did get a ringing noise, and I wonder what on earth is it? And I, I never thought yeah. to check what it was. That's probably what it was. Yeah. It's probably... you'll be a, you'll be a light will come on on the um, on the control stand to say overheat or temperature or something. Oh, I see. So it's off. It's obviously on... Ah, oh, here we go. So it'll be in here somewhere. Where the event recorder is. Yep. One of those lights there. 
if yeah. you click the alarm test button, it makes the same bell and lights them all up. There you go. Oh, cool. But yeah, that bell will ring until the engine stops overheating, which takes several minutes. Ah. I've just realised I've got an amber and then a red coming up, so I'm a bit slow down, but not. Well, yes, especially considering we were just talking about spads, it would be quite embarrassing if you did actually then yeah. do it. <laughs> Now this place has got a very interesting name, it's called Staircase. Do you know why it's called Staircase? Honestly, no clue. It's just one of those... <laughs> one of those weird names. <laughs> one of those names. So, there's the red. I'd love to know why. It's so random. I'll just crawl up. Uh, yep, there's your red. Now, of course, these reds you can't go past. There's two types of red signals, some that you can and some that you can't. So how do you differentiate between which ones you can and can't? There's a marker light at the bottom of the signal, and if it's directly underneath the signal head, you can't go past it. But right. if it's offset to the side, you can. So obviously... that one, It's directly underneath, which means you can't go past that one if it's showing red. But this one you can, basically? Is it this... Is this so you've got to, on the uh, the opposite signal on the other side? Yeah, on the opposite signal, it's off to the side, so that means you can. Right. Uh, okay. okay, I see the difference. Ah. It was really interesting. Sense. It is, isn't it? Are you still crawling up this hill, Jamie? <laughs> Yeah, it's just because of the signal, and I thought I might as well wait for it to change before I start putting power down. Just up here is the staircase viaduct, which is the tallest one along the route at 73 metres. Wow, right, it'd be along here, won't it? There it is. That's a s steep, tall old viaduct. Look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, just look at this, it. it's amazing, look at that. And the water and it, it's just amazing. It's a really lovely route. The scenery is just fantastic. Make I sure. said it, but it really is. <laughs> just lost a couple of points there for speeding. So, Dan Demand's asking, can you tell us a little bit about some of the other rolling stock that ran this route? Because the DJs and KBs weren't the only ones. Oh, there, yeah, there was a, fair, uh, a handful of other types. The, the KBs, of course, were the, the big steam engines at the time, but there was smaller classes all ran it as well. JAs and earlier on, rebuilt Garrett's that were rebuilt as specific engines. They also ran along here. Diesel wise, in this period, there would be DG class English electrics as well. Oh, right. So, so obviously, they were from England and we, we imported them, obviously, I imagine. Yep, that's the way. Wow. They were out. The DGs were the first mainline class of diesel in the country. Wow, blimey. There's so many tunnels as well, aren't there? There is. Oh, there's something I've noticed, yeah. Obviously there's the one at the, you know, the really long, so the eight kilometers. So they, did you say that tunnel would take them 15 years to construct one of the tunnels? They, they started construction in 1907 and opened the trains in 1923. Blimey. And it's a really small section of electrified line, isn't it? Because it's just for that heavy grade, yep. isn't it? Through the tunnel. Just for that, that gradient through the tunnel. Yeah. And because the tunnel was 8.5 k's long, there's no way you could run a steam engine through it. No. 
So is that just to assist it through there? That's that's the only reason they've got that bit of electric. And um, they would take the steam engines off and just run through. The okay. electric they ran shuttle services all day up and down. I see. And then you had a steam loco then the other side of the tunnel. Basically yep. then take the train on, yeah. Take it on there to Westland. Just look at that. So did you say this route is still being used now? Yep, it's still open today. Several million tons of coal come across it. Wow. That's amazing. Is it still for passengers? Yep, the Trans Alpine runs on it, which is probably our most famous passenger service. Wow. It's one the tourists go on. Yeah. You can see yeah. why. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, just looking at this, it, just, it blows you mind. I, I, it's, I, I'm just amazed about how detailed it is. Really mm -hmm. am. It's, it's just... Oh, yeah, spent... oh, go on. Sorry. You've spent a lot of time trying to get it to feel right. That was probably more important than anything else. Was that it? When you were driving it, it felt like the place that it was. Mhm. Mm mm. Another long time. Which is, of course, meant pushing the simulator to its absolute limits in some places in order to make yeah. it work. Yeah. Yeah, when you when you go through some of those um, scenic parts, you can really uh, understand why tourists would want to go on the route, can't you? Yeah, yeah. they always pop to the windows through the Rhymac yeah. Gorge where we are now. Okay. Yeah, it's just... Have you travelled this route much yourself in real life? Done it twice. Twice. It's not. It's not cheap. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it, 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 it's very much uh, like the passenger service are very much aimed at the tourist market. So right. the price is a, is to match the tourist market. So, so is the obviously the train service is that a day service or is that you know do you have to stay on it or how does it you know? No, it, it's a, it's a day service that goes over and back in the one day. Right, but. Most people travel, well, most of the tourism and stuff travels one direction and then they get on the bus at the other end and go explore the west coast. Ah, oh, we see. So when you come on the return service, uh, there's a lot of extra seats and a lot of space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how long is the route altogether uh, on, on, uh, you know, on this, this uh, add-on? Uh, it's about 90 kilometres or so. I don't know what that would be in miles, 55 miles or something. Yeah. Let's uh, Google that, shall we? Let's just get the route map up so people can see. This is the full route map. There we go. So you can see here's the long tunnel here. And we are currently down here. There we go. Yeah, so it's 55.9 miles. That wasn't a bad guess. It wasn't a bad guess at all. There's one thing I didn't do when I came out of that tunnel and checked to see if the signal was green. It should have been. <laughs> well, you didn't spared, so you must have been okay. Yeah. But just look at that. There we go. Mark Peter said it's on his bucket list to do one day. Wow. I mean, it's just about this. Look at that. It's just from every angle you look at it. It's just lovely. You don't even have to try very hard to do your lovely shot. I don't. I don't. Normally, normally I do, but I don't need to with this. It's, we are. I must admit, you. I think you've made us amazed, Stefan. I think you have. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's what we're aiming for, to impress yeah. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I think you've certainly achieved that. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
So uh, what is your favourite then locomotive, um, Stefan of New Zealand? Oh, I'm a steam engine. I'm a steam engine guy myself. Yeah, I would same. say probably, but not not really the the later stuff. More the early period stuff, the pre 1900 sort of stuff is where my enthusiasm lies. Yeah. Back before they started just painting everything black. Yeah. They paint everything black. Yeah, because somewhere around, well, around the First World War, they uh, we started running low on cleaners and things, so the brass work rapidly disappeared and was placed with everything was just painted black. I see. That makes sense. Oh, okay. Well, they couldn't keep they couldn't keep the standards up, so <laughs> paint it black and let it get dirty. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. Jamie, how is it um, performing on your newer computer as well? Yeah, I, I must admit, it's it's I'm, I'm, it's doing quite well. I mean, I, yeah. I think um, Monty Burns, yeah, the, the, yeah, it, the new potato is doing quite well. I must admit, I'm impressed. Um, considering we're streaming as well, um, it's doing quite well. Yes, I'm impressed with how smooth it's running. Yeah. Well, it's certainly an improvement on what Jamie's computer used to be like, Stefan, because we always used to worry about the poor little thing, didn't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I think it would have probably been saying, no, please help, when I would have been streaming <laughs> on it this. <laughs> it's actually quite nice that you're able to um, show off the room a little bit as well, because you've got that uh, beefier computer. Yeah. You got the bird song now as we're coming into the forest. That's amazing. So you actually uh, but, recorded the bird song? Yeah, we, I went up into the bush to record it, so it's what it sounded like when I was there, so. Wow. I think that is just such an amazing little detail to have included. Yeah. It's it's such a nice it's a, it's a small detail, but it just gives so much life to it. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel. You know, like you're going along on here, and you're just like you know. Then you hear the bird song. It's just amazing. Make sure I open the other window. And this must have been quite a difficult route for them to build all those years ago. Um, yeah, it's, it was quite a challenge. Like I said, the original company went broke trying to do it, which is yeah. when the government stepped in to finish it. Because it's, it's just tunnels, viaducts, you know, high embankments. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some serious cuttings in some places. There is, yeah. Well, once we get over the last viaduct up here, it becomes much easier going for pretty much the rest of the way. Okay, look at that. Oh, here's the last foot, it must be this one then. Yep. Is this the longest viaduct? This one or uh can't remember which one's the longest. I think it might be this one. Um no looking back at it was Patterson's Creek, which was the second one of 186 meters. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a quick question, Jim. Yeah. On a heavy freight service, you have to uh, speed a little bit coming off the end of this viaduct in order to make it up the hill. Yes, I can see that. I've just realised. I was like, <laughs> hang on, I haven't got any power on. And I'm like, it's now changed to 1 in 53. I'm like, I better get some power on then. Does it just got quite steep? Yep, for the next several kilometres, it stays at about 1 in 50. Oh, wow. Make sure I keep an eye on me amps so I don't overheat. You don't even... drag and brake. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy, don't let us down by blowing up the engine. No, I'll try not to. Well, I mean, we got a green signal, so we're okay. I mean, it'd be very entertaining if you did. But... It would be, yeah. I, I think, I think uh, that would be the chat set. You know, they'll be recording yeah, we'll it let then. You learn it down. Yeah. No. Oh, 
coastline from Christchurch to Picton took longer to build, did it? Yeah, it only opened ooh, about 1945-ish. A lot of that was them trying to decide which way to go. Ah. And have you travelled, like, personally on uh, many of the railways in New Zealand, or uh, just a handful? Well, we're limited very much by the fact that there's only three lines that there are currently passenger services on. Right. So I've travelled both the South Island ones that have passenger services. Mm-hmm. Uh, why? So is why is there not a need for passenger services? Is there a re, you know do they do they just not run them as much? They they mostly vanished. Um, well, they started vanishing in the nineteen seventies, but they rapidly vanished when the rail network was privatised because ah, there's no money in passengers. Right. I see. Yeah, because obviously, like here in the UK, it's really New Zealand has sort of ended up sort of how America is in some ways. You know, all vast parts of America are only freight only, aren't they? Yeah, most of our network is still freight only. Although there has been a push recently to try and get passenger services reinstated in a few places. Mm. I mean, you can see by the gradient how far it is. It's amazing. Uh, Mark's asking, what is the blue light that's flashing in the cab, please? So that would be the event recorder flashing. That's the event recorder. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I just turn the alarm on again, you'll see which one. So you've got event recorder, TM blower. That alarm is getting rather annoying. Now. <laughs> so you got a ground, uh, ground relay, uh, aux generator, wheel slip, uh, wristed blower, low oil pressure, hot water, low water. So yeah, you've got all them basically. And then you've got all your different gauges here. See, it's starting to flatten out now, though. It is very easy at the top of the grade to suddenly be going too fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, the um, telegraph wires must have taken you a while. Yeah, that's. Oh, I can't remember how long. Probably a couple of months placing those. Yeah. <laughs> it was not a. Uh, uh, very pleasant process, we'll put it that way. <laughs> the, 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 the gantry tool didn't want to do right hand corners, which was not useful. Oh. Why, why didn't they want to do it? No idea. We never figured it out. Just didn't want to do right hand corners. <laughs> and then, um, just for the sake of the chat, like, um, how many of you have been working on this room? Just two of us. That is outstanding. To have created this, two people, is phenomenal. Thank you, look at that. One of us, uh, well, well, myself, mainly focused on making all the assets, and Ryan, who worked with me, focused on sticking the route together. So, you, so did you work it so that you... Uh, what order did you do it in? In other words, you know, did you... How how did you work out together? You know which part of the route you were going to start with first. You know, uh, we we just we didn't really have a set pattern. We just <laughs> did what could be done. <laughs> did you have moments where you sort of agreed to do something on the route, and you're like, oh, I wish I hadn't said I'd do that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure to this day, Ryan still regrets agreeing to do the signal scripting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you think, well, obviously now you've built it, do you think you'd, if you made that decision a few years ago, do you, th you know, if you say you'd, you'd had the opportunity to change your mind, do you think you still would have done it? 
or considering how I long think we were, I think we were always going to do it. It's yeah. just, it would have been nice if it didn't take quite as long, but as it happens, there's only two people. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that there was only two of you and it, it looks this phenom phenomenal and it runs so wonderfully, that I think that's something to definitely be proud of. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's, it's, so, definitely, it's definitely something you can look back on and say, I made that, it, you know, take, yeah. it took me all those years, but it's so worth it. And I should think, I mean, chat, what, what are your impressions of it? You know, are you loving it? I can, I I can imagine they're going to get much enjoyment from it. A um, couple of things. Uh, when you get a minute, Jamie, can we have a tour of the cab? And can you also blow the horn from the inside of the cab? So I'll do two. So I'll, I'll blow it from the outside. So then that's from the inside. Lovely. So and here's the cab. There you go. Fire extinguisher. Come in handy. What's everything else? Show us show us around. So I'm not sure so this is your vigilance button. Oh you got your cab lights, there you go. And you got foot warmers as well. Like oh, yeah. Here's your cab light, so let's make it a little bit easier to see. So, like with America uh, um, Seven, do you run as? Uh, do they run as two in the cab, or do they, they used to run as two, but transitioned to single manning mm. around the privatisation era once yeah. they gained say a few dollars. Yeah. So we got the uh, battery voltmeter and the uh, control air there. Uh, we're going up over more wide bridges and then if we come back over to here so bought them speeding it's probably not a good idea um to those of you asking for questions about southeastern uh, we'll answer those on thursday so i've got all my other gauges up here so we've got dynamic brake speedometer generator brake pipe main point of art and flow indicator there and then these buttons down here so we've got dimmers uh, anti-slip system that'll probably come in handy quite a lot I suppose the anti-slip system yeah uh, it's quite useful yeah um, and the, uh, one thing I found interesting about this is you've got ground lights there you go look at that if I go and zoom in on the bogey that So was the ground lights just for maintenance, mainly? I'd imagine so. Oh, and for seeing the step on the front for the shunters in the yard and to climb up on the cab, because, like, for instance, in this section, all the points would have to be changed by the loco crew climbing in and out, so in the night time it's nice to be able to see where the step is. Yeah. I've just realised I've done it again. No, it's all right, don't worry. It's one of those signals I don't have to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> I keep doing that. I'm, I'm one of the. It's gonna catch me out one day. Yes, it is. <laughs> and then obviously uh, Jamie's driving this now, and it's you know a lovely sunny day, and that is often the case in New Zealand. But is it possible to? Um, are there different weather situations that can be driven? Yeah, we have all of the weather. There's rain and there's snow and there's things, and the locos are all set up to have and adhesion based on the oh. weather conditions. Wow. We've even we've even simulated frost in wow. winter time. So overnight the your friction will get worse as the frost sets in and then improve again as the sun comes up in the morning. That's amazing. That, yeah, that is brilliant. So you can start out on a journey and you'll be fine and then halfway through it's not so fine anymore because the <laughs> rail's got nicer. So yeah, I imagine that can be quite challenging, uh, challenging with all those gradients as well. Yeah, it keeps you on your toes. 
It, I must admit, it's keeping me on my toes. It's, it, and I mean, this is even just like a dry day, isn't it, realistically, with this. But it, it's yep. just... This is perfect driving conditions. Yeah. Oh, Jamie, with imagine... With a passenger tray for a light service. Yeah. Imagine pulling all the coal with a couple of diesels on and you've got to deal with ice and snow and... God. Fortunately, loaded trains are generally downhill, so it's not so much of an issue. Oh, right, okay, so... Except for, you know, yeah. stopping. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, unless you need to stop, it's, it's fine as long as you... It's green lights all the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, uh, another interesting... You were telling us about, obviously, because uh, I sort of mentioned about the electric. So the electric section, obviously, is very unique. So is it still about? No, the electrification was removed in 1995 because it needed substantial upgrades. Yeah. But we were deep in the privatisation era at the time, so the cost of doing so was quite prohibitive considering they had to run a new main power line from the nearest power station. Right. Which is at Lake Coleridge, which is quite some distance away. Yeah. And um, so you say now instead what they do, they, was it eight diesels they now put on there? At the mo yeah, at the moment they're running about eight That's on the head of a train up the hill. A lot of it is redundancy because they don't want the mill to fail inside the middle of the tunnel. Yeah. And by the top of the tunnel, several of them have usually shut down because of lack of oxygen. Wow. Limey. Is that purely because the tunnel's so deep, or...? It's it, it's a bit of everything. Because the tunnel's on a steep grade, the locos have to work at full power the whole way up. Wow. It fills up with fumes. They've got big extractor fans on it, but it doesn't, doesn't stop it from filling up with fumes. That's amazing. The loco crews all have to carry oxygen masks and the like in case something goes horribly wrong. No. Wow. That's uh, quite scary. Yeah. I never. The thing is, this is the thing. I New Zealand Rail. I've, I've never. There's some things you've just told me I've never knew even happened. I mean, the chat. Uh, we've just an uh, artful of just a uh, Stefan's history lesson tonight is very interesting. There we go. Um, could we see a passenger view, Jamie? Has it got a passenger view? I don't think it has. No, it does not. So Something we want to add at some point, but yeah, I can do a side view. Let me see. If I can. There we go. Look, you can see look, the passengers in there. There goes one in there. Look, <laughs> <laughs> and all the coaches have got oh, so these has got Arthur's Pass on the actual coaches itself as well. I've noticed. Yep, they're set up so that you can change what the destination is. You can type really? in whatever you like and have that as the destination. That's fantastic. Put some power down because I've realised I'm on a 1 in 70. And I haven't got any power. Oh, you can almost see it struggling up the hill. Yeah. You can, you can do it. It's, yeah, I must admit, I was, um, Laser Jet has said it's nice to see wooden coaches. So, uh, obviously, all, uh, I'm not sure, uh, are all the coaches wooden in New Zealand, or were they, did they go over to um, steel? They, they transitioned to steel fairly early. Most yeah. of the wooden cars are actually quite ancient, but yeah. we had a lot of them, so they kept using them for a very, very, very long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the types that we've built that have been put in the room were built up to about 19, mid 1920s. Yeah. So this is route set in the 1960s, so they're getting pretty long in the tooth by that point. They are, yeah. Hello. Oh, well, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> DW Trains is uh, appreciating the weathering on the carriages. I must yeah. Yeah, I must have been. 
Sorry, Jay, may I interrupt you? No, it's alright. I was just going to say the amount of weathering is, is really well done on this. Mm. You know. Hang on, I've stopped yeah, on they, here. They didn't, Zealand Railways didn't keep things clean, so uh, there was, they needed to be weathered if it was going to be in the roof. Yeah. Are you intentionally going that slow? No, I, I, I put too much brakes down and then suddenly stopped on the hill uh, on a 1 in 90 gradient and then realised I'm going backwards. So yeah, I then had I to put. <laughs> yeah, going backwards. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to well, make. Think... Yeah, sorry. So, what, what you're really doing is teaching people what not to do. Isn't that right, Jamie? Yeah, that's, that's just the gist of it. It was it was all part of your plan. Yes, all part of my scheme. <laughs> exactly. At least we're going in the right direction now. Yeah, not backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're coming up to now. I'm probably not going to be able to pronounce this very well. They just call it Craigie Burn. Craigie Burn, right? I noticed there's no platform, so obviously, are these just sort of water stops for the steam, or were they, you know, were they actually no, passenger? No, essentially, just they were passenger stations, but they were just halts. You'd stop there if required. They're usually just serving a small, like farming community or something. Right. Okay. Like Craigieburn here serves the big high country farm that's just off the other side of the trees. Oh, we see. Because uh, was was there a lot of farming traffic? I'd imagine, as well. N not so much. Most of the traffic was coal because and and timber, because that's yeah. what was coming from the other coast. But there would still be a bit of livestock and a bit of lime and things taken around. Yeah. Custom has said the uh, apparently the passengers are pushing me up the hill. There we are. I imagine the steam locos used to have to do quite a lot of uh, stops, water stops along the line. The the earlier locos, yes, but the the KBs that were predominant on the line could run from Springfield to Arthur's Pass on a single tender of water. Right. Yeah, because they they did. I, I remember uh, I did have a VHS of watching New Zealand steam, and I did remember seeing that they have massive water tanks on the back for the tenders. Yes. They just like really rounded off at the end. Yep. There we go. Try not to give it big enough. And there we are. Look at that. Excellent. How was that? Look at that. But like every water tank along the route matches exactly the one that was there in real life. Wow. I mean, I think it's been said already, but honestly, the, the attention to detail is just magnificent. Yeah. Just like the weathering around there. Here we go, look at that. Just the weathering there, and each coach. Now you can hear the bird song. It's just a, it's a, it's a lovely route, and I'd, I'd just like to say... Oh, hello. So the, yeah, that's what that... you'd like to say, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's well. That, I, all I was going to say is there we go. But I must admit, well, we are. Uh, it's an amazing route, and we're well, just well done to you two for making yeah. the route because it's just, it's amazing. Well done. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. And um, it is out. So if anybody is interested in purchasing it for themselves, uh, it's currently twenty four ninety nine in pounds. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much it is in New Zealand dollars. Fifty New mind. Zealand dollars. Oh, there ah, you go, you know. Yeah, yeah <laughs> there... <laughs> there we go. Right. So right. yeah, well, I'd love to thank uh, Stefan for being part of the stream. I hope you enjoyed it, Stefan. Um, yeah, I did, and thanks for having me. That's okay. Yeah, you're thank welcome. you for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, and uh, hopefully everybody enjoys this route. Um, 
and we'll uh, we look forward to seeing your feedback and and and, and seeing yeah. people's reviews and videos on it. it uh, we love it, and and you know. Moggy's saying great route. It's a Moggy approved route. There we go. Oh, it's a Moggy approved route. There you go, Stefan. That's all you need. As long as it's Moggy approved, it's fine. You well, know it's good, fine. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Excellent. Well, there we go. Oh. Fantastic. Well, that's that's the end of the stream tonight, and we look forward to seeing you all. We uh, so me and Matt tomorrow are on workshop Wednesday, and then you're back on Thursday, aren't you, Nat? We are. It's another southeastern on Thursday. Yeah, and then, and then yeah, on Friday we're bringing back the um, challenge streams, and Sam is having his first shot at it. Yeah, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see. Hopefully, he won't win this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right, yeah. So it's bye from me. And good night from me as well. Yeah. So we'll see you all soon. See you later, Stefan. Thank you. See you later. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.